I'm just shutting the door because of the Zoom thing. Sorry. Hi, Beth. Hi, hey, Becky. I got to go get my computer glasses. I'll be right back.
Becky, you can turn it over to me if you want. Did you want to make me host or whatever? I'm the I'm the one who uh I had my volume off. I couldn't hear you. Oh. <laughs> um, I just said you you can turn it over to me if you want to make oh, me host cool. and you don't have to yeah, stick yeah, around, yeah. I guess. That's Too bad great. about Doc. I know. Yeah. Um, he feels bad about it. It just um turned out to be, he it was a lot different than you thought. I I think I really threw him with um anyway. He's more of a PC guy and he was not yeah. And he, I think he thought the Mac was going to be more intuitive and it wasn't and it was kind of hanging him up. Yeah. But I would have we didn't figure that out quick enough. So <laughs> All right, so you're gonna advertise you you did you already advertise it or uh, I haven't yet. I'm working on getting it on um the valley job valley work no it's not it's valley jobs, I think. Um it's a site that Grace gave me that Amherst uses. So I'm hopeful we're gonna get it up on there um tomorrow if I can't figure it out tonight. Okay. So, so stay positive. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have a Zoom with Carrie, like beginning of next week, just, just to be able to figure out doing the legal ads and the posting and taking in fees and all that stuff that I'm sure she had shown to Doc, but I, I've never done that stuff. So we're right. just going to talk a little bit about it. So Okay. <laughs> and I, I, I'll help where I can too, Beth. We'll get through this. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. You made me host, right? No. Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick around for a little bit. Oh, um, okay. Sounds good. I didn't know what the timing was going to be with um, a couple of the things. So I'll just stick around for a little bit. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I see Bob. I see Jan. I don't see Scott yet. All right, well, we have uh, we have quorum. So I'm gonna open the meeting uh, at 7 p.m. on August 15th. I'm calling this meeting of the Shrewsbury Conservation Commission to order. This meeting is being recorded. Miriam, you have your hand up. Hi, Beth, thanks. Um, before you dive into your um, agenda, I see that later in the agenda, you have site visit scheduling. And I was wondering if the commission would be willing to make a, a decision so I don't have to stay for the whole meeting about if it's going to require a, a site visit and maybe we could schedule it um, for my small project permit. Um, yeah, so we just, we lost our clerk. So Carrie was leaving and then we had a uh, doc came in for a little bit, but he didn't really stick around. I guess Jan and Bob might not know that yet, but doc didn't stick with the job. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff going on just in terms of getting things onto agendas. Um, so your small permit. Now, a small permit, I believe, doesn't need a legal ad. 
and a butter notification. Miriam, you probably know this better than the rest of us. It doesn't require um, it doesn't require a public hearing. Um, it does not necessarily even require a site visit. That's at the discretion of the commission. And um, I just sent an email um, to the commission shortly before the meeting started. And um, in lieu of a site visit, I offered um, to provide photographs of the proposed work sites. The commission looked at our property last October for an RDA. And mm -hmm. um, we have a professional delineation that's current and a uh, engineer stamped um, survey of the site, which I provided in the application. So, um, and the wetland delineation report should be on file with our, for our property. All right, so because if there is no legal ad required, oh, Bob, you have your hand up? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just curious, what what distance is the project? Uh, if you have a survey, what what is the distance from the project to the wetland? Well, there's two parts of it, uh, the front of the house and the back of the house. There's a very small area of demolition work in the rear of the house that's probably 95 feet from the wetland. And between the wetland and that project area is our house. So our house is a physical barrier for any runoff. And then there's a large 75 feet of landscape lawn and gardens before you get to the wetland. Oh, that's so it's uh and that's probably only about four square feet of soil disturbance because it's just demolishing a deck and converting it to a native plant garden that we're not rebuilding the deck. So um, and, I I don't want to mean to interrupt. The front, but, the, front um, of the, house, the front of the house is um it's about 75 feet. Yeah. Um I don't mean to interrupt, but we just we have such a full agenda tonight and lots of stuff to talk about. Um, we have we have a meeting next Thursday on the 22nd, and if there's no legal ad required or anything or a butter notification, we can easily throw this uh, discussion onto that uh, agenda. I know it's not an actual public hearing, but I still feel like it's a project and you you submitted an application with plans and stuff, and I think it would be good for you to share that stuff with us and talk about it at another meeting than tonight, because tonight we're really booked up. Um, no, I and, was just asking about a site visit, Beth. Yeah, and so I, if, you know, Jan and Bob, what do you think? I'm I'm actually okay with not doing a site visit. I have been to, to Miriam's house two times and seen the whole yard. And I also, you know, saw the map that she provided with this application and whatnot. So I'm okay without a site visit. What do you guys think? Yeah, just speaking for myself, um, projects that are small in scope that uh, don't have a direct conduit to a resource area, as this has been described with the house as a barrier between resource area and almost being at the edge of our jurisdiction, if it's 95 feet in our jurisdiction, 100 feet, I, I, I think it would be not necessary to do a, a site visit. Jan, how do you feel? Sure, I'm okay with that. All right, so no site visit, Miriam, but I will put you on the agenda for next week and I'll let you know what time. Thank you, and I, I did ask for some clarification about the feet question. Right, Can I can get back to you about that too. Okay, thank you. Oh, I forgot okay. to change. Can you always move the camera? All right. So yeah, Doc. Um, didn't stick around. <laughs> so Carrie's helping a little bit. Um, Doc did agree to write up tonight's minutes, which was nice of him, but he's, he's not actually at the meeting, but he's going to uh, just write up the minutes based on the recording. Um, and Carrie is still willing a bit to catch up with some of the old minutes. And I think just help a little bit with uh, some of the administrative stuff as much as she can. Um, and I don't know how much of you caught when Becky was on the meeting, beginning of the meeting, she's posting the position um, as of tomorrow on, a, on her usual places and then some new job listing that she heard about. So hopefully we get somebody sooner than later that can help with all this stuff. Um, 
But anyway, that's the update on that. And I'm actually meeting with Carrie probably on Tuesday um, to just for me to learn how to post things and how to do where where the legal ad templates are and a few of the other things that she she had been doing. And we'll just have to do for a couple of weeks. So um, speaking of that, in terms of minutes for like next week's meeting, um, I guess I'm kind of reaching out to you guys again for anybody who volu would volunteer to um, I take notes and again. then do them. Don't worry about it. I can do that again. You'll do that again? Sure. Thank you. Hopefully it won't be you, too many meetings before we get someone. Thanks, okay. Jan. But tonight's covered, so no worries. All right. So the first thing on our agenda is minutes. Um, we've got the minutes of October 12th, 2023. That was a while ago. And June 27th, 2024. Uh, oh, Scott, Scott's not here, is he? I think he's coming later. Because Bob... I doubt you can, probably neither one of you can vote on the October 12th, 2024. Minutes. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it, nor have I, I seen the, the, the uh, video, so no, I can't. Scott's okay. here. Scott just got here. Hey, Scott. <laughs> um, Jan, you also probably were not here in October 20, 2023. Definitely not. No. All right. So I mentioned that that you can people can vote on minutes even if they aren't weren't there. Which I, yeah. I had a conversation with her. I'd never heard that, but she said that is true. Do they need to listen to the recording or look at the read through the minutes? Um, just read through the minutes. Okay, so we'll have to just put off the October twenty twenty three ones, and and we'll get you. I'll send you guys those and we'll vote on them at the next meeting okay. but I think everybody's had a chance to look at the June 27th um, minutes uh, anybody have any comments on those nope okay I need a motion to approve the June 27th 2024 minutes all right so move to approve the June minutes I'll second second all right Rowan Aye. Douglas? Aye. Khan? Aye. And Wilson? Aye. Great. Um, Scott, I think you missed in the beginning. Um, Doc Prune did not stick around very long, so we don't have a clerk right now. That's not good. I know. It's not good. Becky's um, going to... Uh, issue a, a job, whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's going to advertise the job uh, tomorrow okay. or has a little bit already. He's going to do it on a new uh, new place tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get a response relatively soon from somebody. Um, but meanwhile, we'll just try to do things. I'm going to meet with Carrie next week to just go over some stuff she was doing and Jan has offered to do minutes for a little bit. Tonight Doc is actually going to do the minutes from the recording but starting with our, min our meeting next week Jan offered to do minutes for a little bit so. Thank you Jan. Yeah but I'll have to learn how to do the uh, legal ads and the posting and the fees and everything else but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, Anyway, all right, so next on the agenda, I wanna move up the discussion about the new um, conservation commissioner, just because um, Tom Seifert, who is, is here on the call, is going to a different meeting a little bit later tonight. So tonight, all we at our last meeting, we had both the people who are interested in being on the commission talk to us a little bit, which was great. Um, and so tonight, I think we just want to discuss and vote on uh, who we want to recommend to the select board for our new commissioner. The two people who are interested are Tom Seifert and Todd um, Titchen. I'm not sure how to say his last name, Titchen. Um, 
and we, like I said, we got to meet them both last week. Um, the process will be, we will we'll vote tonight, make a recommendation to the select board, and then the select board is going to vote on it next Thursday, the 22nd, um, which will be great because uh, they'll be voting at 5.30 or 6, and so whoever the person is could actually attend our meeting next week. Um, so do we have any discussion on the two folks that presented to us at our last meeting? Anybody have any comments? I'd, I'd like to say I, I think we're lucky we had two very good candidates uh, come forward. Absolutely. Yeah, it's so great to have keep having people who are interested on being on the Conservation Commission. It's, it's really um, wonderful from such a small little town. Can, can I, I, I would echo what Bob said. And, and let me just ask a question, Madam Chair, on process here. Do we, is it that we are to refer the names of anyone that we think, could we refer both names? Are we to refer only one name? I, I believe the select board makes the decision, do they not? On, or how does that work? I'm just trying to remember process. Well, yeah, they, they make the final decision and they can actually decide anything that they want, but they ask for a recommendation from us because this is somebody who's going to be joining our group. So they, they want to know, or it's helpful to them if we recommend somebody. And there's only one position open. So I, I do think we, you know, should just make a recommendation to them because otherwise then otherwise they don't know, you know, they could go either way without really knowing what we want. And um, it's kind of our opportunity to, to just give a name or whatever. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any thoughts on anything? I mean, my, I guess my only thought is that, and Tom mentioned in the, mentioned it himself, that he is already on the planning board and he's on the stormwater task force, which often meets on Thursdays. <laughs> they seem to maybe be doing it the, uh, what, the, the third Thursday and we meet the second and the fourth and today happens to be the third Thursday. And so the meetings are conflicting. That's where Tom's going at 7.30, right? Tom going to the stormwater task force. So, um, you know, I guess I feel like it's good to give lots of people opportunity to be on committees and boards in the town. Um, and I don't believe Todd is on any other committees. So I guess I throw out that I thought Todd might might be a better recommendation, but I hear, want to hear what other people are thinking. I guess I, uh, I, I I agree with what's been shared. I, I think either either candidate would, would serve they would be. town very well. And so I um, I do think I, I, you know the Tom has uh, shown up for many meetings and has you know shown demonstrated interest in the conservation commission over I, I think the the whole time I've served on the commission, I think Tom's been here and involved in attends meetings and has always had thoughtful input. So I, um, you know, if it, I, I guess I'm not sure from, uh, I, I hear what you're saying, Beth, that uh, the conflict would be a, a problematic, and but I, I don't know where Tom would be on, you know, trying to resolve that conflict if we had an opportunity for both. And so um, I maybe I Tom may have already made his commitments to the other other boards and it's a conflict. And in, in that case, I would agree with you that um, finding another candidate who didn't have those same conflicts would be desirable. Um, that being said, I my you know, when I see Tom is, has his hand up. Uh, I'd love yeah, to he, we can ask him. <laughs> Let's ask Tom. Thank you. Um, I wasn't sure if it was appropriate for me to contribute. Okay. Um, I was hoping that uh, Todd would be here. Uh, thank you, everyone, who said such nice things already, by the way. Um, 
because I also agree that, well, it's not fair for me to say about myself, but, but there are good candidates on the table right now. Um, so if Todd were here, I was hoping to find out from him, and I don't want anyone to speak for him, whether he's really truly sure he can commit to doing this for a couple of years and whatnot, because that's what I look at it. It's really like, what, like a three-year commitment. And um, if he were able to say that, that would be enough for me to say at this moment, thank you for like just the honor of considering me and everything and let him, you know, be a recommendation that you're comfortable with that. So he's not here, but I, I'm comfortable assuming that he's taken that into account already. Um, so would and I, I just wish to spare anyone having to go into territory they don't really need to tonight about evaluating things so I, I guess i would call it i will withdraw my um my uh candidacy i don't know the right word sorry words are failing me um because it does seem to be a good situation uh, so can i offer that please <laughs> Yeah, sure. If, if you want to, you don't. You know, certainly don't have to. Um, I think, I think I, both you guys were both wonderful candidates, and it's yeah, hard. And to I, I just think you know because of that, and I, thanks for saying that. You know, I, I can't judge myself, but um, you know, I, I think it, it's a so-called win-win in a way, or no loss. And um, I do have other things that I'm really excited about doing. Uh, starting at 7.30 tonight for the other committee, which has a lot of related work to the CONCOM anyway, uh, as Bob can attest, <laughs> being on that committee, or a task force, excuse me, at 7.30 as well. So, um, yeah, uh, I only wish Todd were here so I could just have his, like, sort of facial nod, like, yeah, I'm with you, Tom, I understand what you mean. Um, but I'm comfortable assuming that. So, uh, with thanks again, I'm just going to bow out, and I hope I didn't um, cause too much time usage up to now on your part. Yeah. Considering That's the whole great. I, I, I love your interest in the Conservation Commission. Yeah, I'll remain yeah, interested. I'll anytime... we'll still be around. <laughs> you know. Yes. You there's can... always the future, too. So. I'm, I'm sure Bob will update us on the task force, but anytime that you, I'm very interested in what they're going to be doing and anytime you want to come and share things with the commission that would be great cool okay so um i'm actually even going to go off video right now if that's okay with you all because it's only 10 minutes to my next task force and in all honesty i might just bow out around 7 25. Uh, sure and uh tom pers thanks. personal favor if you could just tell them because of a conflict i will be late to that meeting yeah okay i'll mention that so thank you again all of you and uh I'll say good night, but I might just still watch for a few more minutes. Thank watching. you so much. Thank you, Tom. Todd might get the official nod and they'll feel good about that. Take care. Okay. Thanks. You too. All right. All right. So um if everybody's in agreement with that, nobody has any concerns, then we just we need a motion to um vote to recommend to the select board that Todd recommend Todd Titchen as uh, the Conservation Commissioner. Hearing all that, I recommend Todd Titchen for the vacant position. I'll second. All right. Con? Aye. Douglas? Aye. Bowen? Aye. And Wilson? Aye. Yay. Okay. Great. <laughs> Tom gave us the thumbs up. <laughs> All right. All right now, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Dudleyville Dam emergency cert. Um, first, we need to ratify it. I emailed it to you guys. Have you all, you all had a chance to look it over? Okay, so let's vote to ratify. I need a motion to ratify the emergency cert for the Dudleyville Pond Dam construction. Madam Chair, just to, just a brief discussion, if I may. Um, oh, sure. 
I, 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 is it okay? May I continue? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to say that, um, with, with dam removals, it's important to, um, uh, make sure it's an emergency and not just something that's convenient. Um, in this particular case, we had two engineers saying that, uh, this was in fact an, an emergency. So I feel really good about, uh, uh, I'm issuing an emergency cert on this. And I, I also found your, uh, comments and your um, conditions very thoughtful. So uh, uh, I guess in, in, in conclusion, there's nothing more to add. I, I would make a recommendation that we ratify the uh, emergency cert and um, issue that order for Thank you. special conditions. Great. Second? I second the motion. Right. Douglas? Aye. Right. Rowan? Aye. Khan? Aye. And Wilson? Aye. Um, okay, so I think you probably all saw, uh, we just got an email from Susie from DER that they want to start Monday. So be ready, Jan. <laughs> for some site visits. They want to start Monday, but the weather's not looking so good. I think we're supposed to start getting some rain on Sunday, maybe Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, so they'll let us know if they actually do that. Actually, the most recent email said they wanted to move ahead with Monday and um, they were asking for 10 a.m. on Tuesday for a erosion control inspection. Can you do that, Jan? Yes, I changed my oil change appointment. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, I hope I hope that it all works out that they still can do that, that it doesn't rain too much on Monday. Um, so that is the goal. And then they sent us the uh, erosion uh, sedimentation plan slash water management plan. Um, I looked through it and it, it all looked it all looked fine to me. Most of it's from Sumco, which is the contractor, which is typically who puts together a, a water man the actual water management plan. Um and it all it all looked fine to me. Did did you guys get a chance to look at it? I I, I did. It was well crafted. Um I've uh done two other dams that happen to be uh done by some some co removal dam removals and they, they are an excellent group. I'm happy for their involvement. Yeah, no, I've worked with them too. They for damn demolition, they are the ones. Um okay, so we don't really need to vote on that. That was a condition that was uh, you know, in the emergency start that, that we wanted to look at that plan. Um, so they provided it. We looked at it, we reviewed it, we have no comments basically to uh, to share with them. So but we don't really need to vote to approve it or anything like that. All right, so good. I think we're done with that item then. All right, so so if it, if it happens, Jan, let us know how it goes on Take Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and if you guys, if I can't go because I have to be at work Tuesday morning, but if Bob or Scott want to go 10 a.m. Tuesday. It's exciting when they they roll out that excavator and they take away that first hunk of the dam. It uh, it is quite dramatic, and I, I I may try and make that. Yeah, maybe I'll head down there Tuesday after work just to see where it's at. <laughs> cool. Well, I think yeah. So ten a.m. would just be erosion control inspection. Who knows if Tuesday they'll actually start digging? I'm not. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, all right. Um, so next on the agenda is site visit updates and Jan's been doing a great job, um, setting up site visits and we've gone on a lot of them, I feel like in the last two weeks and, um, she's been doing the site visit form. So Jan, you want to update us? Okay, so we went to see uh, 678 Pratt Corner Road where tree removal was the idea. And we got a curtain drain added to the 
thought process, and I think we're expecting uh, an RDA on that next time. Beth? Yeah, I think you guys probably all got copies of the RDA in your email, and it's going to be on our agenda for next week. Yeah. There's a lot of mushy ground around this house, and some of the trees are in it, so that was part of the consideration. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one was 30 Sumner Mountain Road. That was a very pretty location. They wanted to know if they could build a carport near the conservation lands. Uh, didn't seem to be any issues. It was far enough from any wetlands. And uh, apparently we don't have to worry about the fact that it was 10 feet from the conservation lands. The next one was 16 Cornwell Road. Um, Fellow wants to build a garage. He was plenty of distance away from anything. <laughs> there was no wetland anywhere nearby. Also a beautiful Shutesbury location. Uh, the next one was 66 Leverett Road, the new library. Bob and I uh, went, I should have given everybody credit for the other ones too, but Bob and I went out to this one in a deluge. And uh, they had uh, very nice erosion controls already in place for the construction. I haven't gone by since. I, I don't know if anybody hasn't seen whether they're cutting trees down and stuff yet. Well, the trees are down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. they took all the trees down. Well, that was the next step. Okay. Uh, the next one was 585 Wendell Road. Wim Levine wanted to know if he could build an addition. Uh, there was no wetlands anywhere near his house. So... Absolutely, but we got a history lesson there, which was certainly entertaining. <laughs> and today we went with Steve Sullivan to have a look around uh, at the erosion controls that were left over from the culvert project. And most of them can be removed. He had some ideas about restraining some stormwater runoff that has become apparent since the job was completed. So we'll be hearing more about that. Well, that is hey. all. Thank you. That was great. Super it's been that. fun to go to a lot of these places. Get all over Shakespeare. Um, all right. So next on our agenda, yep, past 715. Um, so 678 Pratt Corner Road, Jan just mentioned that we did the site visit. Um, unfortunately, due to our issues with our, our land use clerk, uh, the legal ad actually did not get in for tonight's meeting for 678 Park Corner Road. So that project's being moved to our meeting um, next week. So August 22nd. Uh, I think I said 715. Let me see. Yeah, it's going to be 715 August 22nd. So for anybody in the uh, public who's here for 678 Pratt Corner Road. That hearing has been moved to next Thursday, August 22nd at 7.15 p.m. All right. All right, I see Mark is here. So the next thing on our agenda is, yeah, the conservation easement parcel, uh, map eight, parcel 151. And Mark Whiteman here is to, here to describe that to us. Hi folks, nice to meet y'all. Um, I was awarded an open space a uh, special permit from the planning board several months ago, as well as a, a couple of special permits from the ZBA uh, to allow us not to cut down a lot of trees to be able to have access to the property through a, so we could do it through an existing woods road. Um, we have a four acre uh, building envelope. None of that is in any, any wetland area, uh, but there is, uh, 18 acres total on the land, just over 18 acres, with just under four acres being the building envelope. The rest is uh, has to be put into a conservation restriction, and that has to be held by a governmental agency or a nonprofit. 
And because it's only 18 acres, I say 18, I think it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of land to me, but because it's only 18 acres, I'm having a difficult time finding someone like Kestrel Trust or <clears throat> one of those that would like to take it on. Um, the Conservation Commission in this town has, from my knowledge, uh, minimal knowledge, has not done a or accepted a conservation restriction on behalf of somebody in town. But the planning board said uh, they're sort of a newer planning or conservation commission and to bring it to you folks to see if it be something of interest, uh, whether you would handle the conservation restriction and be the authority to uh, oversee it to make sure the restriction is not violated. Um, the restriction is Mass General Law 184, Section 31 through 33. That describes uh, what is allowed on the land, such as farming is allowed to continue. Um, some lumbering is allowed to continue, um, but mostly it's just residential use on that four acres and the rest is, um, is not touched by for much of anything except for uh, making sure that the um, plants, trees, and animals that are there are, are left and conserved. So I, I have a, a call into their email into the planning board as well, asking them on the last two open space special permits, I think there's only been three in Shootsbury that have been awarded. On the last two, those people had to find conservation, somebody to hold their conservation restrictions as well. So I'm waiting to hear back from them to see if they can tell me who those or who that entity was that took the conservation restriction in case you folks um, have no interest in doing this. But I'm hoping that possibly you might. Um, I think that there's, I was rereading the information from what at Mass General, uh, Mass General Law 184, 32 is the enforcement. And basically it says the restriction may be enforced um, by several different um, methods and shall entitle representatives of Holder, which would be the town, to enter the land in a reasonable manner and at reasonable times to assure compliance. So I think that um, being right in town, that, that would make it a lot simpler and it would happen probably uh, more regularly than it would happen if it was like the Kestrel Trust or somewhere that wasn't in town. Um, I would expect there should be some sort of, I don't know if you're set up for this, but some sort of fee paid by the owner of the land when the town goes to inspect um, I think in my discussions with the planning board, they said something about once a year is pretty standard. I mean, you know, obviously a lot, nothing's happening over there, but just to assure that nothing, nothing has happened uh, going in once a year and taking a look. So um, it, it wouldn't take a lot of time um, to be able to do it. I don't think it's a huge commitment on the, on the Conservation Commission side. Uh, it would be something that'd be great for, um, for Shootsbury to have that option be able to have this overseen by you folks. So that's my plea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I know I saw um, I know I saw the map with the conservation area marked on it. Did you actually send us the conservation restriction with the enforcement and stuff? Okay. I just can't remember. No, I, I, no, I didn't send the uh, Mass General Law, but you can look it up. It's it's 184 sections 31 through 33. Um, it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, there's not a lot in there except for um, it explains to you what you can and can't do on the land. And then in um, in 32, it does explain to you how you can enforce. I was amazed at how, I mean, it's a little, it's wordy because they're talking about restrictions for housing and, um, you know, subsidized housing and other different restrictions that are being um, explained in this chapter 184 and these two are these three sections. So it's a little wordy, but if you look at just the conservation restriction areas, it, mm -hmm. it reads really. Okay, so this isn't like a conservation restriction that uh, an actual document, sometimes there's an actual document written up that's a conservation restriction, but this sounds like it's just the conservation restriction under the law that was required due to your subdivision. Yeah, the way that. Yeah, the yeah, the, uh, yeah. I mean, t technically, technically, it's not a subdivision. They they made it very clear to me this yeah, it's not a subdivision. I just <laughs> have that button hit into my head so many times I have to say it. Um, in the special permit, it, it does describe. Um, let's see, try and give you as little as possible here. No, I'm going to read the whole paragraph. No building permits or a curb cut permit for conservation or construction of a dwelling or other structures within the building lot or preparation or construction of the driveway shall be applied for or issued until the applicant has recorded a conservation restriction for the conservation 
lot in compliance with Master and Law 184, uh, and so and so 31 and 33 uh, through, th through 33. So I think that what's looking for is uh, for me to create a restriction based on these laws, and it's basically just going to say, you know, we're following the laws of Master and Law 8, uh, 31 through 33, and then that would be recorded. I already did oh. stick my foot. <laughs> Uh, which I had mentioned uh, to Beth earlier, uh, it does say that I'm not supposed to get a curb cut until this is recorded. And I I thought I was doing the right thing by moving forward with trying to do the things the planning board has asked to be done. So I went for a curb cut, uh, got the curb cut, and then I called the or uh, emailed the DPW uh, after my last planning board meeting and said, I'll have them destroy the curb cut. You know, uh, information will go back for it when I need it. So that's been taken off the books and I'm back in the good graces of the planning board. They understood that I was just trying to clean up the driveway and do what they had asked, but uh, not supposed to get a curb cut until I have this thing recorded. So I was gonna let a buyer um, record this because I figured they might have a, you know, a, um, entity they'd rather work with, but I don't think it's that easy to find one after my searching and from what the planning board has told me, they've had people go through in the past trying to find one. So I'm going to take care of it. I also have just two years after the approvals. That means I've got like a year and a half left to uh, put the restriction in place, but I'd rather get it done. And uh, again, that's it seems like this would be a nice fit being able to have the town do it, but that's up to you folks. All right. Um, Scott, do you have any comments on that? And uh, since you're our conservation land guy? Yeah. I did, Mark Verdes made you thank you for sending that. I we we do have uh, conservation easement restrictions that we do monitor every year here in town, and so I I do I appreciate um, your request of the conservation commission where you are, and um, I do think that this could be brought into the workload. I I also appreciate the. The one thing I don't think we have done very well is uh, you know, set up a process by where where we would do those inspections. And I think we have some that we've, we've contracted to do to make sure that they're done. I think um, that's still work for the Conservation Commission to consider if we want to uh, to take on additional responsibilities. And, and um, so that was the one part I think I had follow up to your request is, and, and I'm not sure if it's a question for you or, or others here on the, on the commission, but um, what that may look like um, for, to help offset the costs of going out. And if we were to contract this um, for inspections to, I think they're relative gotcha. nominal fees, but I, that's the only question that I, I think we would need to do a little bit more work on. Um, what was your timeline for this in terms of a decision, Mark? Um, I've had a lot of interest in the property, so it, I, it could go on a deposit sometime. Um, who knows when? I had somebody up there yesterday, farmer actually, was looking to uh, have goats and sheep, which I thought was pretty cool because that would go back to what it was used for 100 years ago. Uh, the, the stone walls are still there. So uh, barring any purchase by somebody else, uh, I've got a year and a half, <laughs> approximately a year and a half to get it done. So, I, you know, the sooner the better for me. I would like to get it taken care of, but you have time to discuss it and have another meeting if you need to. And I think what you said is a, a really good point is that um, is the town actually going to go out and walk it? You know, somebody from the Conservation Commission can actually walk it once a year and take a look, or are you going to hire some sort of entity that will take care of all your conservation restriction easements and do them all at once? I'm sure it's gonna be a pretty nominal fee. It won't take a lot of time, obviously, to, to do something like that. So either way, it's fine with me. And um, yeah, it's in your time frame. Okay. So, um, oh, Bob. Yeah, I I, uh, I think um, having dealt dealt with similar cases, I think um, uh, the town would be a good candidate for this particular conservation restriction. I do like the idea of having a, a, a fee, uh, which would allow, uh, if just in case the commission could make it, uh, yeah. $200 would hire a, the commission could hire an, an agent or wetland scientist to walk the property just to see that everything is compliant. They, 
hasn't been a casino built over the previous year um, and uh, or, or something that is new and not allowed under the restriction. Right. So um, that would that would be my preference. Obviously, I haven't seen the document yet, but I just kind of wanted to, to chime in on that. I think that sounds great. I think we're on the same page. And, uh, you know, there's fees for everything else, you know, I mean, all inspections uh, through other departments and the rest, it seems to make it makes sense that there should be some sort of fee to, to cover your time. Or you, Bob brings up a really good point that if you folks, for whatever reason, don't have the time or feel that you um, or you feel you want to put it in somebody else's hands, there should be some way to pay them. So that obviously should come out of the landowner, which is me at this point. And I have no problem with that at all. Nominal, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So at this point, so you have a year and a half to put this together, and but you're you're sort of looking for some kind of a commitment from us at this point, so that so that as you put this together, you put us in basically as the as the entity who's going to oversee. Yeah, I think that uh, you know we can take it one step at a time. We've had a good response tonight from the uh, board members, from uh, two of you at least, and that. Um, I think we should just um, move forward in a positive way without making a commitment yet. You don't have to make that commitment yet. I'll talk to my lawyer about putting together the actual restriction that's going to be recorded in the Registry of Deeds. I have a feeling that it's going to be you know, a real short one paragraph. We're going to follow Mass General Law and um, whatever else, you know, legalese has to be put in there. And uh, I'll come back and present that to the board and see if um, that meets your criteria for the or matches the restrictions you currently have, and then uh, we can go from there. That sounds great. I'm also wondering if, if anybody's interested in the site visit to go to go look at it. That might be. What do you guys think? Sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd, that would be great if that were to work out, Mark. Um, oh, I love walking that land. <laughs> Anytime, perfect. it's a gorgeous piece. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll we'll uh, we'll. Jan is our site visit person. She can maybe you guys can set up a time and and see if we can find a time that Scott especially can make it. Um, that'd be great. Jan, if you can just email me, that'd be fantastic. And uh, we'll put something together. Awesome. Okay. Thanks great. for your time. I really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. Good night. All right. Um, so next on the agenda is 31 Lakeview, but uh, I don't see, I don't think he's here. The lawyer um, asked if, uh, he asked if he needed to be here before eight because he was doing something. I don't think he's here. No. Um, so it's not uh, eight. But we are. Yeah, I think I want to wait for the lawyer because I, I told him that, <laughs> That, that we probably wouldn't get to it till eight, eight and he was busy. So I think I may do something else on the agenda and then okay. go back to that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Um, all right. So then the other thing on our agenda we've got is the order conditions for lowering Lake Wyola. Um, Adrian, you're here. Adrian, sorry. Having a rough night. <laughs> yes, I'm here. No problem. Thank you. Um, or so can I just give a little quick so I, I met with uh, Becky and Adrian um just to, and here's Becky too to to talk about the order conditions for lowering the lake um and they're looking um for an extension while they continue to to do work that they need to do to submit a new notice of intent to kind of basically update our order conditions so with that intro um Adrian Great. Thank you. Yes, I'm Adrian Dunk from GZA. Um, I know, so tonight is not an official extension request. We have not submitted the necessary Wetland Protection Act form, but we wanted to just discuss with you all um, before submitting that request, um, kind of the, the sense of the commission. So GZA has been retained by the town to do both some dam engineering work, um, at the dam and then also to re-permit the annual winter drawdown. Um, we know that you have a currently valid order of conditions. It was issued in 2018 as a five-year order. 
And then because of COVID with the emergency order, the extension or the expiration date told. And so currently it's set to expire in January, 2025, right in the middle of the drawdown. Um, so we have been, you know, working with the town, going through some historic records um, so that we can work with not just the Conservation Commission, but make sure that we are um, authorized for a new, a new drawdown authorization with the Chapter 91 office. We've been um, discussing with Natural Heritage. And so ultimately, um, some additional engineering studies need to be performed. Some more coordination with the state agencies needs to be performed um, all prior to submitting a new notice of intent. Um, to avoid any lapse in authorization or a midwinter refill, which would negate the purpose of the drawdown for public safety and dam protection. Um, we did want to discuss with you all um, your thoughts about issuing an extension to the order of conditions. No changes in the, in the conditions. We're not looking to change the rate, the date, the timing, um, so that we can continue to exercise, the town can continue to exercise the drawdown while we go through these other lengthier review processes. Um, so we would like to ask for a three-year extension with a very fervent hope that we would be back with a new notice of intent before three years, but um, to avoid being repeatedly on your agenda for smaller incremental extensions as we go, um, we, we would like to ask for a three-year. Okay, um, I I feel like the the extension um, is, I, I feel like the work that they're that they're doing to to produce an NOI that really um, is a real um, update to the old NOI and and will be a great improvement to the old order conditions that's out there. I think is very important. Um, so I think an extension is is warranted. Um, I did look at our new bylaw and it, it actually says a one year extension. We can allow one year extension. I think when I might've been talking to you guys, we were looking at the regulations, which, um, go a little bit more into longer extensions, but under our bylaw, it says where we can extend orders of conditions for one year. Is that going to impact everything significantly? Um, when we spoke before, we thought there could be two, three year extensions. Can there be two or three? Can there be multiple one year extensions um, over time? I mean, if, if it's one year, that's what's in your rules. That's all we would request. Um, <laughs> but we might yeah. just see you again next year. Um, like I said, hope, hopefully not, but the based on some of our other consultation with the state, we may have to complete um, a Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act review, a MEPA review, and that can just be a very in-depth environmental review. So, yeah, you know, I, we, I know. certainly if we're allowed one year, we would like to request one year. Right. Um, Let me just read through this. I just was, let me find it on the bylaw. Okay. Ten-year period. Yeah, it has no. Um, it has no restriction on multiple extensions. There's nothing in the bylaw about multiple extensions. So if we give you a one-year extension. Now you can come back for another one. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. I mean, we we hope to work through it all, but we yeah. can't. You know, we're you never know. Beholden yeah. to the availability and timing of others. So, um, yeah. So in that case, we would like to come back to the commission with an extension request for one year. Okay. How do the rest of the commissioners mm -hmm. feel about about that? Any comments? Yeah, I I just like to say I think probably one year is good, and uh, it would 
we perhaps give some urgency to the to the requirements for the MEPA and other things. Yeah, you never know with MEPA. Um, okay, any other comments though? So yeah, it sounds like our we're all we're all uh, you know on board for um, receiving a extension application. Okay, great. We'll put the paperwork together. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Becky. All right, what time is it? 152. Um, I think uh, we'll just start our discussion about 31 Lakeview Road. Um, Kathy, is, is your lawyer here? No, I'm sorry. I don't see him here yet. Yeah. Because, yeah, he said he had something till eight, I think, eight o'clock. Oh. Um, so he might be a few more minutes. Um, I don't know if you want to well, talk at all, introduce introduce yeah. your request. His, um, I think his letter kind of speaks for itself, and I'm assuming that you've all seen that. Um, basically, we're at a point with our project where uh, the house is complete. We have an occupancy permit. Um, we wanted to clean this these conditions up uh, before we apply for a certificate of compliance. Um, so that's the reason for this request for an amended order of conditions. Um, we've pretty much met every other condition that was um, that was placed on our project, um, and our only con uh, concern were these last seven conditions that were in perpetuity. Um, I think you'll see when you do the final um, post-construction visit that we've tried to kind of go above and beyond with plantings. And that's one more thing that we're, we're trying to connect with our uh, engineer to do an as-built plan because um, we had to make some modifications. But I think we've, we've gone kind of beyond in terms of plantings and kind of restoration of the property. Um, I don't know if you've seen the, the project, it's kind of on a main drag. Um, so a lot of people drive by it pretty regularly. Um, we're pretty proud of it. We, it. It was a rough start because Joe and I both, I think we're learning um, about wetlands protections and we certainly have, we're not experts today by any means, but we certainly have learned a lot through the process um, and have a greater appreciation if we didn't already have an appreciation for protecting the wetlands um, than when we first started with this project. So it's just these last um, seven in perpetuity conditions that we would like the Conservation Commission to consider waiving so that we can get those uh, removed from our um, deed. And then we can move forward with requesting um, the certificate of compliance. And if you hear snoring, it's not Joe, it's our dog in the background, sorry. <laughs> I, I, is, is this your lawyer? <laughs> yes, yes. Attorney Martin, I'm assuming, yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, I communicated with you about this, telling you that I had a prior commitment and so that it would be available at eight, you assured me that it'd be okay. So thank you for that indulgence. Yeah, yeah, we, we just started. We, we just started talking about it, so. So I think um, I think Kathy's uh, stole my job. Uh, it's been a nice uh, summary of their feelings and thoughts on this. I did also submit uh, a letter to Ms. McNichols as I was asked to do. You're kind of coming and going a little bit. Huh? Is this any better? In fact, you froze. Is this any better? Uh, I think you froze again. Okay, I'm, I can hear myself. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Let me, let me try. Oh, maybe it's Look. mine. Did I freeze? 
Anyone else having trouble hearing me? I can hear you, Jim. Yeah. I can hear you, yeah. I can hear you too. Okay, I'll I'll speak up. Uh, when I first corresponded with the, the town regarding the Salvador's position with regard to the in perpetuity restrictions, I discussed it with town representative and then I sent correspondence uh, to her. Uh, and in response to that, uh, she asked me to uh, communicate with Ms. McNichol, yeah. Attorney McNichol, uh, directly on the issues and to put a, a memorandum together to her. Uh, and uh, we've exchanged correspondence. And I last sent a correspondence to her on July 18th, uh, which I hope everyone received. Uh, I did copy the uh, planning department uh, at the town. And uh, the initial request after I submitted the first petition was to address legal concerns and issues in support of our petition. And um, I have cited the Mass General Law Chapter 184, Section 23, uh, there, which places a restriction on any term uh, of a condition. Uh, now, Section 31 does allow some condition, some uh, restrictions to be uh, extended beyond the qualified term, but there is a further uh, requirement that any uh, condition uh, must uh, not be arbitrary and capricious uh, and be consistent with Massachusetts law. Uh, the wetlands protection bylaws that the town adopted provides for waivers based on undue hardship. The bylaws specifically provide for a waiver of a condition to avoid being restrictive of the use of the property so as to, uh, con so as to not constitute a taking of private property without compensation. And that's the fundamental issue here that these restrictions in perpetuity and as described by Kathy um, are so restrictive that we believe that uh, they constitute an unfair and improper taking of their property, denying them to use it for the entire time that they would own it or anyone subsequently. So it would be a cloud on the title uh, going forward. Uh, and uh, there's uh, no, uh, no support that uh, otherwise uh, would suggest that they should not be uh, removed. Their conditions are 27, 28, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Um, and it is, in fact, denying their use, them, the use of their property in many ways. They're overly restrictive. There was no uh, rationale uh, that is uh, considered uh, by the law to be in support of the in perpetuity conditions. Uh, it was a very aggressive restriction at the time. Uh, they're so restrictive that in, even in a literal reading, they prohibits any activity, even if it's temporary. So they couldn't rake leaves in that area. They couldn't mow their lawn. Uh, they couldn't remove leaves, um, placing um, you know, a, a burden on them, a restriction on them, um, and denying them the opportunity to maintain their own personal property to their own personal standards, which they want. Uh, they made a significant investment in this retirement property, and they'd like to keep it up but also be compliant. And they've satisfied, as I said to the town in my prior correspondence of July 18th, that they've satisfied all the other conditions or will satisfy them uh, as the, when they get the final inspection. So um, I, I'm happy to go into more detail on the legal aspects of it if anybody wants to, but the fundamental thing is that uh, your bylaws itself permit waivers uh, and uh, the second thing is that they are, I think, arbitrary and capricious given the extent. And thirdly, that they're so onerous as they constitute a taking uh, of the property without being compensated. And the fourth thing is that it, it severely impacts uh, the value of their property, which the town is not allowed to do uh, negatively without good cause and, and a basis. So it's, um, you know, I think it's fair and reasonable to ask that these uh, conditions be. Uh, released. Uh, there were lots of conditions placed on the property. They've worked very hard to comply with those. They've, and I think um, uh, it would be 
only fair and just for the board to do that. I'm happy to answer any questions or supplement what I said. I'm mindful of your time. and But as I say, I have submitted uh, prior uh, analysis to the town. Um, thank you for that presentation. Um, Bob, you have your hand up? Oh, you're muted. You're on, you're on mute. Bob. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, Councilor, could you put those up on the screen, the uh, uh, seven uh, conditions that you wish to um, have dispensed with? I wish I was that uh, computer facile. I but can, we, I can we, do You can do it because we, we lost power where I am, and so I'm running off my iPad uh, on a battery. Uh, so, but thank you, Beth. Yeah. Uh, granted, I, I'm a late comer to this particular property. I wasn't here for the, the original uh, issuance of the order, but my understanding is the in, enti entirety of the parcel is in Riverfront Resource Area, is that correct? Are you, are you asking um, Steph? Yeah, the entire thing is in Riverfront and um, uh, quite a lot of it is in buffer zone to a BVW also. Um, I can show the map too. Did you guys, you guys got all this, all this stuff too, I think sent to you. All right, so let's see. All right, so here is, can everybody see my screen? We can. Yes, yep. thank you. All right, so this this is the order of conditions. Yep, this is the order of conditions that was issued. Sorry, I'm gonna scroll down. All right, so those are the those are the ones in issue. But I think oh, I hate when this thing hides what I want to click on. I think I have the map. Yeah, can you guys see there. the map? I need to yes. zoom out a little bit, but and rotate maybe. <laughs> that didn't help. <laughs> All right. Well, well it, it does show the lot, and then, yeah. then it shows its location with relation to the, the lake. Yeah, so um, so there's also the Appendix A that has the, I wonder if I have that. In fact, I think that's at the bottom of this. Why don't we just start with that, if I can find it. Sorry. Here it is. Okay. So here's a map of the site, which shows this 1 through 10 is where we had asked for um, markers of the no disturb zone. Um, and I'll just give a brief review of the, here's, here's Lake View Road. Um, here is where the house now is. This is showing it as proposed, but that's the house. Um, this is a raised leach field. There's the Sawmill River goes right along here. And then there's also a BVW, which is marked by these delineation points. This is mean high water coming along with those delineation points. Um, so let's see, the, this says 50 foot wetland buffer is this line that goes kind of like that. And that's to the, that's to the wetland. And then somewhere on here is the, hundred. I think this is the 100 foot riverfront line. So that's just the first hundred of um, the riverfront from the Sawmill River. All right. Does that give you a good idea, Bob? Yeah, yeah. So so the entirety of the site is is in the inner riparian, the the hundred foot from the edge of the from the edge of the river, so to speak. Yeah. As, as well as a buffer zone. Yeah, and Bob, considering... there was a house there originally, and we we replaced right. it. Okay. Yeah, it's a redevelopment yes. project, like a right. this, riverfront this... redevelopment. Correct. This 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 is not. There was a dwelling on this prior to their uh, construction. Yeah. 
All right, so now we can go back to those if everybody's done looking at that. Um, so yeah, I, my thought would be that we go through each one of them because um, just my first go through of them, there are a couple, there, there's a couple easy ones to just point out are, are very legal. Um, and maybe at least those two simple ones we can just talk about tonight. Um, the first one, uh, no additional net loss of permeable surfaces is, per is permitted without written approval of the Conservation Commission. Well, the entire site is really within the 100 feet of the BBW um, and also within the first 100 of the riparian. Um, so because in the Wetlands Protection Act, the only things in the 100 foot that you could do would be minor activities. And there is no minor activity for adding a new um, impermeable surface, such as a driveway or a sidewalk. So no matter what it, what perme impermeable work they wanted to do on their property, they would have to come to the Conservation Commission anyway. Um, and that's kind of covered under number 18, which is right here, any other additional activity in areas within the jurisdiction of the commission shall require separate review and approval by the conservation, by the commission or its agent. So I guess I find number 27 to be a little redundant of number 18. And I think we just leave it in there instead of going through a process of, of removing it from an order of conditions. I mean, it depends how we go with this, but I find that that's a perfectly legal condition. Um, I don't know how do people other people see that i agree yes speaking only for myself i i don't see a problem with it it being mentioned twice yeah on the other hand if it is mentioned twice so it isn't necessary to have here under the perpetuity conditions it's going to be covered if they want to do something they got to have a permit so I could see taking it out. And in fact, it it's the difference between the aforementioned and this one is this is in the structure of the conditions that is in perpetuity. So well, it does, this one doesn't say anything about perpetuity. No additional well, net loss is permitted without per written approval of the conservation. Post construction, uh, it does it, say perpetuity conditions. It, That's funny. It does say in perpetuity conditions, which are all of the by I didn't notice that by structure uh, uh, of a condition and, and legally it means anything under this caption paragraph heading is an in perpetuity condition and you'll notice that um, we didn't we didn't uh, challenge some of them because for reasons I can get into either but 27 is an in perpetuity as opposed to the one that says you can come back and do things whatever number that was. So I Yeah. I do think no, I didn't notice sorry, I didn't notice that it was titled that way. Um you know, under our standard conditions, we obviously have a post construction conditions section in all of them. And I guess this one it got added that it says in perpetuity. Um so that changes it. Um I mean, what's kind of funny is, I mean, it is in perpetuity anyway that they would have to come back <laughs> forever and ever and ever as, <laughs> as long as the wetlands regulations exist. Well, it, it, know? It, it, it also means, it also could be interpreted to mean, which is why it's these are considered a taking, is that you really can't come back because it's in perpetuity, this condition. So mm -hmm. that's... that's this, Miriam, could I make a comment? I was trying to raise okay. my hand. Um, yeah, you can make a comment. Yeah, I was just going to make a comment that in drafting these the order of conditions, which I drafted, if you'll notice down below, um, number 29, upon completion of the project, the applicant shall conduct, contact the commission to arrange a post-construction site visit. Well, that's obviously not a perpetual condition. That's a post-construction condition. So, you know, my interpretation of that heading is that it is both post-construction and in perpetuity conditions and the uh, language of each condition makes it clear 
Um, if it's a, a perpetual condition or a continuing condition, it, I think it's clear in the language. Some of these are not perpetual, obviously. I mean, obviously right. you're not gonna be always having post-construction site visits forever. You're gonna have one. Thanks. Well, well number one, number 29, we uh, did not uh, ask to be modified. Uh, be, because of of because uh, I think it is uh, something that the my clients didn't really you know weren't really uh, overly concerned about but I think it's also a fair rating to say since this isn't per perpetuity uh, if they were to do something else they would have to arrange a post construction site visit which they would have to do so that's why. We, we didn't mind this staying in, and we're not asking it to be uh, removed. Mm -hmm. um, the next one yeah. is just still looking at 27, no additional net loss. It just also says without written approval of the Conservation Commission. Um, so again, it's really just asking them to come back to the Conservation Commission with with any projects that involve um, impermeable surfaces. I guess I just don't see a problem with that and see that it's a pretty um, usual condition in, a, in an order of conditions. Why should that, that property be burdened with that for in perpetuity? Yeah, speaking again, just for myself, Bob here, um... I don't see it as a burden. It's more of a reminder uh, 10, 20, 50 years from now, there might be a new new owner that wants to do something. And then it's got here in the, the a reminder uh, that, that this is something that needs to take place. But it's in the conditions already, but not in the in perpetuity condition. So it's not that we don't want to have a reminder. It's just that we don't want it to be linked to in perpetuity for whatever reason, things could change. And so it's an extreme condition for what it's trying to accomplish, particularly since it's already in another section. I guess, isn't it perpetuity that, I mean, even without saying the word, <laughs> everybody, everybody has to abide by the Wetlands Protection Act. All, going forever and ever until the Wetlands Protection Act disappears. So this, is simple. this isn't putting any extra burden on them at all because all of us for, the, for until perpetuity, if something is in the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission, we have to go back to the Conservation Commission with that. You know, anybody who has a piece of property that's within a hundred feet of a resource area and wants to put some kind of an impermeable surface down, has to get approval from the Conservation Commission. And, and that's, will go, and that, for me, that's perpetuity. Like, that's my property is perpetuity because that's the law right now. So it's that, it's, I, I, I basically, I understand a lot of your questions having to do with some of these other conditions, but that first one, I, it just seems like that's the situation for all of us. I mean, isn't, doesn't isn't that Bob? How does, doesn't that is that the way you look at it? Well, I, I look at it in the light of Chapter One Eighty Four, Section Twenty Three, that puts a limit on any condition or restriction to to a thirty year period. I did recognize that there are some uh, that there is some leniency or uh, ability to make things in perpetuity or for a specified amount of years. Um, but uh, there has to be uh, it's, it's a certain reason to go beyond the statutory period. None of that is articulated in here. Um, and uh, you know, as I said before, it's also duplicative of another condition that's in there. But I, I don't, you know, I, I, it's I just, that one this. just seems more like a reminder to me of like, if you do something in the conservation's uh, jurisdiction, you need to go back to the Conservation Commission. It doesn't seem to be the same as the others, but um, okay. Why don't we Why don't we move on? We can come back to it if we 
Okay, well, let's, 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 Scott, you have your hand up? I, actually, I was going to suggest maybe we, because I, I, I do think these conditions are also, I, I maybe do agree with, um, with Jan and, and I think the other commissioners, I think they are, they're already a condition, they're, they're already required um, before we get into whether or not it's worth taking them out or, or not, because I think it, in some ways this is a, a distinction without a difference. And, um, but I'm wondering if maybe moving on and talking about some of the other conditions to see if there's anything here worth editing and then we can circle back to this question. Okay. Kathy, That's you have your hand up. I just wanted to say one brief thing before we move on. Um, I think our issue is not so much that we don't wouldn't want a reminder or wouldn't want a future owner to have a reminder. Our issue is listing anything in perpetuity is maybe off-putting to a future owner. And I think if it's covered in a previous section without calling it an in perpetuity condition, that might be a little easier for us to take. That's all. Okay, point taken. <laughs> um, all right, so then the other one that I noted that just seems to be something that, uh, again, I guess you might call it repetition, but it's something that really should be in there is um, number 32, uh, maintenance or repair uh, by the property owner of record or designee of the dry basin for um, rooftop runoff and supporting drainage system shall be the responsibility of the applicant and future grantees, the design capacity, stormwater management, treatment capacity, and structural integrity of these facilities must be maintained. So now I'm going to scroll. Everybody watch out. <laughs> Go up to the standard conditions that are the state standard conditions from DEP in the permit. Yeah, that was when it was. Right. Nineteen going up to the order of conditions, the, the first. DEP. So nineteen C, which is so these are the standard conditions that the state includes that automatically go into the order of conditions from the state. So number C, nineteen C, the landowner is responsible for BMP maintenance until the issuing authority is notified that another party has legally assumed responsibility for BMP maintenance. Prior to requesting a certificate of compliance or parties, the responsible party shall execute and submit to the issuing authority an operation and uh, maintenance compliance statement for the stormwater BMP, identifying the party responsible for implementing the stormwater BMP operation maintenance plan and certifying the following that the OM plan is complete Wait and will be implemented upon receipt of the certificate of compliance. Future responsible parties shall be notified in writing of their ongoing legal responsibility to operate and maintain the stormwater management BMPs and implement the stormwater pollution prevention. Again, plan. so if, why why repeat it if it's a requirement? Exactly. It's, it's, exactly. It's already yeah. in. Yep, it's in there, but I just want everybody to see it that again, I guess possibly the us listing it in our special conditions was a reminder that it's there. And if you read through this, I mean this really is is a is talking about if the responsibility moves on to other parties that those parties need to be notified um you know so that involves when you sell the property i mean it it, it doesn't say the word perpetuity but it, it certainly is talking about some future responsibility for that bmp maintenance um so i just i guess i just wanted to point that out that us restating it almost um is not a it's it's not a crazy thing <laughs> well again it's a restatement in a con in a in a section of the conditions that are labeled in perpetuity you might interpret the dep's conditions 19c as requiring continuous uh, notification on a change of ownership but this again is in perpetuity and it does put a cloud on a title because these will be there. Uh, everyone will have public access to find out about them. But as I said before, most of the conditions do expire in 30 years. 30 years, yeah. 
Yeah, um, and that number 32, capital design capacity term calculation must be maintained. Responsibility the applicant and future grantees. So it doesn't necessarily say perpetuity. Again, it, it kind of similar language to what the state was saying. But Miriam, you have your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to um, make a comment that is in my, my observation of orders of conditions. It's uh, pretty common for there to be continuing conditions for the maintenance of BMPs. Um, and the purpose of having this additional uh, condition also is that when you issue the certificate of compliance, it means that um, attached to that certificate of compliance, you'd be issuing like a partial or you know, with continuing conditions so that anybody looking at that certificate of compliance would see attached to it these BMP maintenance requirements. Otherwise, you know, you're kind of requiring someone to go back and look at the original order of conditions and look through the fine print in the DP form to understand that there's this requirement. So it's kind of um, highlighting it and, and um, making it more salient because um, it's important for anybody who is purchasing the BMP property with a PMP be understanding um, the need to maintain it. I've seen lots of situations with people who bought properties with BMPs and they didn't have a clue what, what it was and didn't know how to maintain it. Um, so um, that I think was part of the rationale for it. Um, I also believe that the regulations that were adopted by the commission in 2023 talked about continuing conditions for um, things like maintenance of BNPs. And I think the Wetlands Protection Act also made regulations make reference of continuing conditions, particularly for things like the maintenance of BNPs. I think it actually calls it out. Um, so just some thoughts about um, where this came from, I think. Again, if I may, um your own wetland protection bylaw provides for waivers and uh, a waiver of a condition to avoid being restrictive of the use of the property or is to constitute a taking of private property without compensation. Again, here, the applicant is not challenging the conditions that are incorporated with the order of conditions from the DEP. It is very concerned, and I think rightly so, from a legal basis and a title basis and uh, evaluation basis that listing, the, they, they should not have to get in, into a, um, a court case in 20 years when they go to sell this property as to which conditions are in perpetuity and which are not when it, they're listed both places. Um, so I think it's unfairly confusing. I think it's unnecessarily onerous and um, since everything is provided for, uh, not everything, but the ones we've addressed are provided for in the uh, conditions by the DEP, that we're trying to clean this up uh, to avoid any confusion going forward. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think, um, I think part of tonight was was to kind of hear your presentation and um, get an idea of um, you know what you're requesting and to start looking at some of this stuff. Um, I think now I, I at least have a better idea and think that um, you know I, I think I may want to share this and talk a bit more with with our town attorney about about this. Um, I guess I'm wondering, do the other commissioners have questions and comments? I, I mean, I feel like we're not going to figure this all out tonight. Um, I understand what you're asking, and I do see some, I do see issues with with this, and I think we need to look at it a little bit more. Um, why don't I stop sharing? How about that? What do the rest of you guys? Got any other questions or comments, commissioners? My only question would be if they want to identify anything about the other um, in perpetuity sections they're identifying, if they if they have anything else to say about them individually. 
the, the ones we requested, uh, Ms. Rowan, were Ms. Rowan was condition 27, 28, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Yeah, I, I know. I, I just, if you have anything in, in addition that you want to highlight for us to consider. Oh, I see. I, I, my apologies. I misunderstood you. Yeah, I maybe following up on that. I think the some of these that what we've talked about to date are, I mean, we could talk more. They're, they're listed here as these post construction slash in perpetuity conditions that are already required under the Wetlands Protection Act and our bylaw. And I, I was interested actually in some of these others, like 30 that were off. I mean, these were, these were um, uh, conditions that were placed to in, in recognition of the work that was taking place in the resource area, and they're not they're not covered elsewhere in um, you know required under another law or regulation. But they are, you know, in looking at them, uh, they are serving as the you know the the offset for some of the work that was done there in the riverfront, and so um, it seemed. I think when these were placed, that it was assumed that they would remain in place for as long as the um, as the you know the the initial dwelling impact that they're that they're serving to offset you know remains in that resource area. And so I I would like to hear from um, you know whether it's Kathy or uh, legal counsel. The, the rationale for why we would be removing like 30 and 31, um, you know, as maybe as a place to start um, in perpetuity because the, the impacts that they're offsetting are remaining in, in perpetuity, I would assume. We're not revisiting whether or not the dwelling could remain. So uh, 30, if I, thank you, sir. Uh, 30, for instance, says the applicant shall maintain and repair the markers and boulders as needed. Is that forever that those boulders have to be maintained by the property owner? It's too vague to be a, a perpetuity condition. Uh, it also says that no future activities within this area should be allowed that involve clearing of vegetation, grading, or other soil disturbance. And so that would be raking, clearing, branches, uh, you know, plantings, uh, except uh, that, uh, uh, so it says, except for activities approved by the condition. So now you're asking the homeowner or the property owner to come in every time they wanna do something um, that is, uh, you know, something that limits their use and enjoyment of their property, not in violation of any regulation. Um, you know, activities required to eliminate safety hazards, maintain the driver and culvert. So now you're making in perpetuity and then safety hazard isn't defined. Uh, then this is there shall be no dumping of leaves, grass clipping, brushes or other deb debris. Uh, again, in perpetuity, uh, the condition shall survive the expiration of this order and shall be included as a continuing condition in perpetuity on a certificate of compliance. So that to me uh, is somewhat vague it's, uh, and it is onerous and it is in perpetuity. Things could change uh, in the world in 10, 25 years. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not necessary. Uh, uh, and it's again, restricting their use of the property, which the town is certainly entitled to put appropriate restrictions on, but not take someone's property by overly restricting it. Uh, and that's without any compensation and that's prohibited by the law. So that's 30, uh, 31, the marking of pins and boulders in condition 30 should be inspected by the commission 
for any sale of the property in perpetuity. Um, and so, uh, again, this is a condition that uh, is requiring additional activities and uh, expenditure of funds. Um, and, you're, and it's asking its basis is to mitigate the adverse effects of prior development activities. Well, what, what is prior? It's before someone, before uh, Salvador's own this property? Uh, that's what it's, it's too vague. Uh, and that's therefore places again an un, un, reasonable burden, I think on them with respect to uh, 32. Uh, again, uh, you are, um, you know, asking the property owner to incur expenses um, and future owners, not only the current, uh, to, to do things uh, such as controlling rooftop runoff and supporting drainage systems. Uh, topography could change, lots of things could change, and the design capacity, uh, stormwater management treatment capacity, and structural integrity issues must be maintained. Again, in perpetuity, they could become unnecessary, they could become um, out of date, and things could change in the world, and yet this would be something that would be held up as being in perpetuity. Uh, that's 32. Uh, 33 is, again, you know, we, we, we got, uh, people make comments about, well, you know, in the future, future owners, that sort of thing. And now uh, you're putting a burden on the property owner to be an enforcement agent. Uh, they have to provide verification that they notify the commission of the transfer that they, they've been notified of the grantee about the perpetual wetlands. Uh, that, that, a property owner, that should not be a property owner's um, responsibility. Uh, and again, it's an ongoing condition. It's like telling you, you could, if I'm gonna buy your house, you gotta tell me that you had a, uh, a leaky oil tank 10 years ago. Uh, you can choose to tell me, but putting this on as a condition uh, is, onerous and not, and not supported under your own laws. And then the last one is uh, 34. And 34 is within the transfer, within 30 days of tra transfer of ownership, another burden that the grantee should write a letter with an original signature affirming that they understand. It's again, making the current owners of Salvador's being the police to someone who buys their property. Again, that's a undue burden and restriction on their property uh, that is not supported by the law. So none of the conditions that they're asking to be removed uh, ameliorate or eliminate uh, all of uh, the, the protection of the property. Uh, there's lots of conditions from the DEP. There's other conditions in here, the vast majority of which have already been approved they built this you know wonderful structure they're very proud of it but they want they don't want to have to face all these responsibilities as they get older uh, and uh, uh, be responsible for giving the police and giving notice to a potential buyer uh, and and let the buyer do their own due diligence um, so that's our reasoning on those sir I don't know if I've answered your question but those are the those are the specific reasons. And as I say, you have the ability to waive these. I think the imperpetuity ones that we've identified do not, uh, do not contribute to the overall protection of the area that's already cared for and provided for. I just think they're frankly egregious, far reaching, overreaching actually, and uh, unfair to the property owner. And I do think it by being so onerous, it constitutes a taking and restriction of the property, which is prohibited by statute and the law. Um, I, I don't know if Kathy wants to follow up with anything that I said uh, representing them. I think you've captured everything that we were hoping to communicate. The one thing I might add is 
if the commission wants to come and see what we've done, come and actually, it won't be the, the uh, final inspection that will go with our application for certificate of compliance, but if it would help you with regard to this request to come and see the property, we'd be happy to arrange a visit. Thank you. Um, yeah, we can we can talk about that. Thanks. Okay, quick question, Kathy is the is the um, project complete? It is. Yeah, it is complete with the exception of um, getting the as built planting plan from our engineer. We've been having a hard time reaching him, um, and the plan is slightly different from the original because when we started to plant things, there were you know there were obstacles here and there, but. Um, we need to get that to the commission and then we need to complete the request for a certificate of compliance as well. Uh, but this was the first step that we wanted to address uh, before we went any further. Great, thank you. And when you say complete, does that include putting in the boulders and the markers for the yes. no yeah. area? Okay. Those, those were one of the first things we did um, because we thought they were gonna be really hard to do. Um, so the pins, with um, the markings and all the boulders are already in place. Yeah. Great, great. Um, all right, I'll stop sharing this. Okay, so again, I guess I feel like, um, you know, we've heard, we've heard the request. Um, and I think we all need to sort of digest it a little bit. Um, I'd like to put it on our agenda for, for next Thursday. Does that work, uh, Kathy, for you? And no, I, I have con uh, several conflicts next Thursday, unfortunately. Oh. I don't know about Attorney Martin, what his schedule looks like, but next Thursday doesn't work for, for me. Mm. I'm checking mine right now, Kathy. Um, Did you say uh, next Thursday, uh, Ms. Wilson? Yeah, August 22nd. Well, at the risk of relying on my phone as opposed to my computer, um, I could be available on August 22nd. Uh, I don't know if Kathy um, would be more comfortable being present you know, uh, when we Joe, um, Joe could be available next Thursday, even though I'm not available. So if you are, Jim, um, he will be as well. Okay. All right, we don't have, oh, sorry. Does that work? Well, All right, I'll, I'll put you down for um, eight o'clock. We have a few other things before. Yeah, that would be eight, helpful. 8 p.m.? Does that work? It does. Actually, if it's at eight, I might also be available, but I'll, I'll check. Okay. We have very full agendas these days. <laughs> Lots of stuff. If you want to schedule a tour of the property before, then just let us know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think, I think Thanks that for might that. Be helpful. If you had a site visit before, I think that you that would be very helpful then, particularly for the members who raise questions about specific things, they could they could get the uh, the visual um, you know view of why they uh, as you can see they're Kathy and Joe are not trying to be difficult here they're just trying to be practical um, and mm -hmm. and work with the commission to be you know be fair and reasonable so I don't uh, I think a site visit would help satisfy uh, you that we have good faith or trying to comply with everything, willing to comply with things, but not sign up for in perpetuity on things that are really, in my view, are against the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jan, do you want to work with Kathy to set up a time for us? It sounds like it'll have to be the beginning of the week. I'm away Monday, but I'm back Tuesday. I'll do that. Great. Um, all right. Well, thank you um, for the presentation. And like I said, I think we need to digest it a little bit. I might run it, run some questions by um, the town attorney before we talk again next week. Bob, you have your hand up. Yeah, I apologize. Um, 
it, half of the board is new. Um, I know that this was uh, uh, so it's only half of the 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 board has seen this. Um, I think it'd be important to perhaps review the video or at least have uh, all of us review the the, the minutes, um, which led to the discussion this discussion which led to these uh, uh, special conditions, which which you know I can only assume were not appealed during the appeal period. So I think that would be that that would be helpful. Okay. Yep. We can we can try and track those down, and I'll send them to you guys. I think Scott and I were both around for that, but I think it was when I think we said that this was when we first started. It was I think this was the first one of the first projects I was part of with the commission. Me too. Yeah. Um, okay. Little did you think it'd be so memorable. Right. <laughs> Neither did we. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for your time and attention. Uh, if I'll touch base with Attorney McNichol as well. And if she needs anything from me, I'd be happy to provide it. Um, and um, we'll see you in, on the 29th, did we agree on? 22nd. 22nd, I'm sorry. Yep. Thursday. Thank okay. you so much. Good Great. night. Thank, thank you. Good night. Thanks, Beth and Commission. Thank you. All right. I don't think we have any other. So the all that's left on the agenda is site visits and scheduling, unanticipated business. Does anybody have any unanticipated business? <laughs> <laughs> now we're very busy. I'm very busy with this concom. <laughs> it's a little crazy. We've been getting a lot of emails. Not sure everybody else has noticed how many we've been getting, but lots of stuff. I think we got another, I haven't even looked at it, but it was another building uh, building application email. I haven't even looked at what address it is, but I'll look, Jan, and we might be doing another site visit, you know, where somebody who's applying for a building, um, a building permit. And so then we just get notified about it. And um, those are the ones that sometimes we go to and it's not in our jurisdiction and that's okay. We got another one of those today. Um, just lots of stuff going on. We have so. a tree question too. Yeah, thanks for forwarding it. I did actually finally get it, but I didn't get it until like I had been home from our site visit today and then I got it. So I don't know, maybe it just was my, my phone wasn't getting connection, you know. And I'll, I'll remind everybody that we had a tentative uh, date for the Kestrel walkthrough and that's firmed up now. That's, what did you say about it? I don't remember what the date was in September, but it was on that list of uh, site visits. So that's actually a good date. Okay, everybody's on board for it, Kestrel. Yeah. Oh, I think did I did I email you to reach out to Penny? All right, what was going on with that? I can do that. I think I wrote it down. That was for the North Lake tour talk. Yes. Oh, no, never mind. She's just going to come to a meeting. So it's not going to be a site visit. Okay. I've got her on the agenda for September 12th meeting to just come and talk to us about it. So. Okay. Okay, great. Um, if nobody has anything else to say, um, motion to adjourn. Oh, I move. I'll second that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Con. Aye. Rowan? Aye. Douglas? Aye. And Wilson. We'll see you guys soon. Have a good night. Great. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.